because of what the doctor told us. We, the doctor told us we thought the birth would be late, first baby and all that stuff. And so we chose the last possible date we thought would be safe, that the baby wouldn't be coming. And Jack <laughs> was eager to get here. And, oh, so, and so Jack, uh, so uh, Kim went into labor. And of course, I couldn't go to the meeting, which was being held on Whidbey Island anymore. That was that. That was an obvious decision, so I stayed uh, to be present for Jack's birth. And then we had, as usual with the labor, it was a long event. I can still remember Kim doing some calisthenics and all kinds of stuff. And one thing I did do was call into that group that I had gathered from around the country to kick off the meeting. It wasn't while my son was being delivered. Are you insane? I was in that room counting breaths and doing all the other stuff us dads do and getting a little nauseous, as I remember. And... I got to watch the birth of my son. And you weren't on the phone? No, I wasn't on the phone when my son was being born. That's absurd. Let me ask you about... <laughs> That's just absurd. You, you've since uh, remarried, <laughs> and uh, you, you have two young boys. Yeah. Uh, if you should win the race for U.S. Senate, are you going to move to D.C.? You know, we haven't decided. I mean, in the end, the race has 60 more days to go, and we're going to go through those 60 days. Uh, and see what happens. Now, I'm, I'm biased a bit towards moving the whole family there, if we choose. I mean, that's how Galen and I have talked about it, only because you get a little more time, you know, at the edges of the day with your children if you're back there, than if the children are here during the school year and you're flying back and forth all the time. So I'm, we're inclined to, but that's a decision we'll have to make uh, uh, should the electorate be... Uh, 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 send me back there. Well, that is a very difficult question because I, you know, I'm curious as to how you how you balance the the family life and 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 your work life. Uh, yeah. You know, one of the reasons that uh, Dino Rossi decided not to run for Senate is because he also has a young family and he didn't yeah. see himself being able to fly back from D.C. to Seattle all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, isn't that the first discussion you have before you decide to run? As to how would we work this with it, our it, family? It would it you was. have had that discussion and decided already? No, no, we haven't decided exactly. We've taken a lot of advice along the way. Of course, it was one of our most intense. Discussions discussions because being in political life is extremely difficult you want to try difficult talk to your son like I got to a couple nights ago my nine-year-old about the things kids were saying to him at his first day of school that's difficult you know it's, it's just a very difficult way to live your life to be in public like this but you know what you know what what we decided Galen and I just agonized over this part of it but we decided that we cared so much about the direction of state and country that we felt that on balance, the best way to teach our children that, is, that in the end, life is about serving others, was to sacrifice and show service and not just talk about it. Are you worried so about we, becoming... we made a conscious decision. Are you worried about be doing the same thing and becoming a part-time dad again? No, no, not at all. In fact, I was able to be successful in parenting with Jack. And I'm very proud of that. Very proud of that. And it was intensely difficult. You know, you've got to go back and understand what it's been like. You know, I haven't lived in the same city as Jack since he was two because his mom chose to move back to her family's roots up in uh, Doylestown, Pennsylvania. And I was in D.C. at the time. We were on our way back to Seattle at the time. I went ahead and moved back to Seattle, got homesick for Jack, and moved back to the East Coast. And what did I do every other weekend in order to keep that connection? I took a train up to Philly. And my ex-wife, Kim, was great. She would bring Jack down to the train station. And Jack and I would train back to D.C. And then I'd take the train back up to Philly and bring him home. And then I'd take the train back every other weekend. When my job took me to Chicago, what did I do? Every third weekend, I would fly back to Philadelphia, pick up my son. We would fly back to Chicago so he could be with his brothers in Chicago. I mean, I'm sorry. This has required tremendous work. It's been joyful work. It's been magnificent. Jack's a great kid. And I've learned that you can parent. You can parent successfully in a lot of different ways, like a lot of people do. I think about our service people go off on those ships for nine months or a year at a time. They parent successfully, too. We all find our way if we care and love. You said in your open letter that one of your professional regrets is leaving up a misleading ad about Mike Lowry yeah. wanting to legalize marijuana. You went public. And you, you said you regret that. Yes, I do. Uh, Governor Mike Lowry tells us he never got an apology from you. He says he doesn't care. <laughs> but I, I guess I'm wondering if it's I, a sincere I, apology. Why not call him up directly and say, know, that's, that's as a, opposed to just going public with you're it? You're not the only one who's mentioned that. And I've thought about that. I, I should talk to Mike at some point. I, Mike and I don't know each other. I've never, you know, I don't cross his path. So I, I've never had that chance. But I should. You're exactly right. 
we have time to talk about one more issue, and that, that is uh, one of your, it wasn't one of your public regrets, uh, but it is the issue of credit scoring. Uh, oh, okay. The Wall Street Journal reported that uh, when you were head of Safeco, the insurance company uh, canceled people's auto insurance based on their credit score. Do you believe that's a fair way to assess people by their credit? Yeah, they shouldn't, they shouldn't cancel people just for credit scoring. And what they should do, what we did, um, and I, I want to be clear, when I got there, there were a lot of practices going on at Safeco that I don't think were right. So you're, you're now talking about very early Safeco practices. The programs I put in place uh, were programs that use credit as a part of a larger way of evaluating the risk, not as a single determinant. But I mean, we can't, we can't, you can't use things like race or income no, or neighborhoods. Not. Those are all illegal. But is, isn't credit scoring doing about the same thing? Not, it, no, discriminating not at all. against people who, who at, might be, who are poor? Not at all. In fact, what we found from our research was that people who have less resources, so let's say they don't have very much money, they tend to take very good care of their credit. They tend to take very good, and they wind up with very high credit scores. You know, when we studied it, the neighborhoods that had the most impact, guess where they were? Woodenville and some other of the more affluent communities in our state had the most impact because of credit scoring. So, but it's, it should never be used all by itself. And in fact, we help the state craft laws to make sure that it's used properly as a part of an evaluation, not as a single determinant. Mike McGavick, candidate for U.S. Senate. By the way, that's part of why we were able to sell more insurance into more diverse neighborhoods. I'm very proud of that fact. Mike McGavick, thank you. You bet. Good of you to join us. We invite you to share your opinions on Mr. McGavick's statements and whether any of this affects how you plan to vote. After the show, join the discussion on Blogger King, the upfront blog at king5.com. Click up front. When we come back, another candidate for U.S. Senate. Still ahead on this 40th anniversary of Star Trek, the Senate candidate who's making the final frontier his campaign theme. Just who is Michael Good Space Guy Nelson?